uh, welcome to in this session so in this session we will see the reasoning questions based on solid state so let us start this question explain why ice has a sharp melting point whereas glass melts over a range of temperature I mean glass having the broad range of temperature while the ice having a sharp melting point answer is very easy because ice having the crystalline solids and crystalline solid always having the sharp melting point while the glass is amorphous solid that's why it, it has a range of temperature carborundum that is silicon carbide is a very hard substance with very high melting point and is used as abrasive why it is used as abrasive because this uh, silicon carbide they possess three dimensional covalent network like a diamond so like diamond is a perfect covalent network that's why it possesses extreme hardness even more hard than diamond and it is used as a abrasive fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine they form the molecular solids yet the melting point increases from fluorine to iodine from fluorine to iodine melting point is increasing explain because molecular mass is increasing from fluorine to iodine so you will see the ma mass of the iodine is more than the fluorine and if it is happens so intermolecular forces become stronger and if it is stronger then what will happen they will form the molecular solids and it melting point will increase from this to this because of this intermolecular strong forces Novel gases and metal crystal crystalline with the closed pack structures. These two metal, novel gas and metal, they crystallize with closed pack structures. While the melting point of the novel gas crystals are yet exceptionally low. Why? Why it happens? In novel gases, what happens? Atoms are held together by the weak Van der Waals forces. While in metals, metal in metals, they have the strong metallic bonds are present. That's why they form the closed pack structures, and the melting point of they also form crystals, but they are exceptionally low because they are the held together by the weak Van der Waal force of attraction. So NaCl pieces are harder than sodium metal. Explain why it is harder than sodium metal? Because in sodium metal, metallic bonds are weaker than the electrostatic forces. So the in NaCl we have electrostatic forces while in sodium metal we have metallic bonds crystals of sodium chloride are bitter in nature why because this NaCl again have the strong electrostatic force of attraction between these ions that's why crystals of ionic compounds are brittle in nature so we have to predict which will having the higher melting point and why. So we have benzene and this is the hexachloro. You can see it is a hexane C6 Cl6. So which have the higher melting point. Actually this is based on the molecular masses. So C6 Cl6 having the high molecular masses and a strong Van der Waal forces. That's why the melting point of the C6 Cl6 will be higher than that of benzene. In case of HF and SCL, HF having the high melting point because it has hydrogen bonding. KO2 and SiO2, so SiO2 having the higher melting point because it has a extended network lattice. It has a extended network lattice. That's why silicon oxide having the higher melting point. Similarly, with in case of argon and xenon, xenon having the higher melting point because it has a higher atomic mass. Covalent bonding occurs in both molecular and covalent network solids. Why do these two kinds of solids differ so greatly in their hardness and melting point? We are talking this covalent bonding. One is the molecular, one is the covalent network solid. But yet their hardness and melting point is changing. So actually in molecular solids, they have a weak intermolecular forces bind the molecules in the lattice. For example, dipole-dipole, Van der Waal forces. So dipole dipole existing with the NCL Van der Waal forces B, Cl2, sulfur, phosphorus, ammonia, ice, glucose. But in network covalent solid like a diamond quartz, they have a strong covalent bonds. They join atoms in the extended network. So this is the reason why they have the higher melting point. Why is coordination number of 12 is not found in ionic crystals? So we can see coordination number is greater than 8 is not possible. 
coordination number greater than eight is not possible because the radius ratio in the range of this zero point seven three two to one it forms a cubic void. You take this ratio, it will forms the cubic void, and the geometrical shape with maximum coordination for any solid. That's why we won't get the coordination of twelve in any crystals. What is the effect of the high pressure on the NaCl type of structure? That is six to six coordination. Because it changes to cesium chloride type structure. That is eight is to eight types. It will change to these types, and high pressure increases the coordination number. That's why uh, six to six will change to eight to eight. This is the high coordination number of cesium chloride. Why do uncharged atoms or molecules never crystalline in simple cubic lattice? They are never crystalline. Why? Because uncharged atoms or molecules are more effectively closed back to each other. So this is one important. It is more effectively closed back to each other. That's why they never crystalline in simple cubic lattice. Give regions solid with F centers are paramagnetic in nature. Because these solids having the unpaired electrons and this negative ion is missing from its lattice sites, leaving a hole, and which this hole is again occupied by the extra electrons to maintain the electrical neutrality. That's why they are paramagnetic. You can see this is the lattice structures, A structure. This is the A A positive. This is the anion B minus B minus. So one of the anion B minus is lost. It is occupied by the electron. This space is called as the F center. If F center is occupied by the electron, so this becomes your paramagnetic because charge is balanced, but atoms are missing. So this is a one kind of defect. Pure silicon is an insulator, but becomes a semiconductor on heating. Explain. Silicon is covalently bonded with four neighboring atoms and give rise to highly stable tetrahedral structures. If high amount of energy in the form of heat is given. To the crystal, as a result of which one of the covalent bond is broken down. When silicon having four bonds, if you give high energy, so one of the bond is broken, and bonds broken means electrons are ejected, and these electrons release they can migrate, leaving behind a positive charge. That is a positive hole at the site of missing bond is there on breaking the bond. Then what will happen? The crystal will now be. Let us see. The crystal will now be able to conduct electricity. Why? Why it is conducting electricity? This crystal, when the bond is broken, because when electric field is applied, this electron will migrate to one direction and positive hole to other direction. So let us see this silicon. So silicon having the four bonds. So one, two, three, four. There are eight electrons are there. Uh, two is shared by this two, and two is shared by another, and two is shared by this one, and two electrons shared by this one. So when you heat this one, when you give you heat, what will happen? This electron will come to this side in the spaces. So this hole is created. You can see hole is created, and this electron is shared to this one. In there. So when you apply the field, electric field, when you apply electric field, so if this is the positive, this is the negative, the electron will move towards the positive field, and hole will move towards the negative field. All holes will be moving this side, and all electrons will be moving this side, and uh, this side. And if you drop with this uh, silicon, it can also possible if you are dropping with uh, phosphorus or gallium. So again, it becomes the silicon becomes your N type or P type of semiconductor. And that's why pure silicon is insulators, but it becomes semiconductor on heating or on Doping with phosphorus or gallium.
कैटाइन वैकेंसी सम क्रिस्टल्स मेक देम गुड कैटलिस्ट वाई ट्रांजिशन मेटल कंपाउंड दे शो मेटल डेफिशेंसी ड्यू टू द एबसेंस ऑफ मेटल एंड फ्रॉम इट्स लैटिस द चार्ज इज बैलेंस बाय द एडजस्टेंट आयन दे हैव द हैविंग हाई हायर पॉजिटिव चार्ज व्हिच अल्टीमेटली इंक्रीजेस द केमी जॉब्सन केमी जॉब्सन मींस इट इज एब्जॉर्बिंग द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स लेट अस सी सो दिस इज योर क्रिस्टलाइटिस यू कैन सी ए बी ए प्लस बी माइनस बी प्लस सो दिस साइट इज वैकेंट so higher positive charge is occupied by the adjacent ion by adsorption this side become vacant and due to this vacancy what happens this metal vacancy due to the missing positive charges so this is the di positive this is this is the di positive charges due to di positive charge wise this will be balanced because this is the a positive a positive so when it become a positive so it will be electrical neutrality is maintained but density will be decreased and it becomes also very good catalyst because this site will increases the kemi absorption so it can absorb the other atoms or electrons that's why cation vacancies are very good catalyst non stoichiometric nacl is a yellow solid due to the f centers or color center presence of excess sodium in nacl it makes a anion vacancy defect And it makes the crystal to appear yellow in color. A hexagonal closed pack structure and a cubic closed pack structure for a given element would be expected to have the same density. Explain. Because both the structures, what happens? The fractional total volume occupied is zero point seven four. So this is the packing efficiency in case of hexagonal closed pack structures or cubic closed packing in both cases packing efficiency is 7.74 or 74% also the two structures having the same coordination number that's why they are expected to have the same density also why are solids such as crystals of a diamond which is a giant molecule not classified as the molecular solids so this is the question so by convention a solid is classified as a molecular solid only if ice dry ice sulfur or phosphorus it contains small molecules but substance like a giant diamond it contains a giant molecules that's why they are called as the network molecule not molecular solids because they are classified as the molecular solids because they are contain small molecules diamond don't have a small because they are network solids so they make the giant molecules That's why crystals of diamond is not classified as the molecular solid. How is the strength of dipole-dipole interaction related to the distance between polar molecules? Are dipole-dipole forces short range or long range forces? Dipole-dipole forces are stronger than the shorter distances because they are relatively short range forces. Okay. That's why the strength of dipole-dipole interaction related to the distance between the polar molecules. It depends between the these forces because these forces are actually the short range forces. 